Hey everyone, what I have for you today is once again the Majority RS Pro USB condenser microphone. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that this is currently my favorite cheap microphone. I paid $15 for mine, but current pricing is bouncing around between $25 and $35. It's great for $25, maybe not as great for $35, still pretty good, but we're starting to get into the territory of microphones that are more popular, sound better, or have some other unique features. For example, the Razer Siren Mini is worth considering. Siren C. Irene? It's normally $50 and it occasionally dips down to $40. And Razer, if you're watching this, maybe instead of every single marketing video being an actor saying, hey guys, welcome to the stream, maybe put one out where you actually say the name of the product because this isn't a word. Y'all made it up. Maybe tell people how to pronounce it. Anyways, one of my few complaints about the Majority RS Pro is that they present the idea that this is a large diaphragm microphone. They dress up the capsule in this big plastic circle to make it look like it's 34 millimeters, but really the diaphragm is only 14 millimeters. It's a common size in cheap microphones, but it's still small. So I've bought a larger, but still inexpensive 25 millimeter capsule from China. I'm gonna show you how to install it. We're gonna find out together how it sounds. Before that, as a real quick reminder as to how the Majority RS Pro sounds by default, I'm talking into it from about a foot away, no equalization, but with the gain normalized. Now I'm talking up close to test the proximity effect. Here I am from a bit further away, maybe three feet or so. Okay, and I'm talking into it from the front, rotating around to the side about 90 degrees, continuing to go around to the back, and pulling up on the other axis to talk into the top. All right, let's take this over to the workbench and I'll show you how to modify the Majority RS Pro. Okay, now I've got the Majority RS Pro here on the workbench. This should be a relatively easy mod. First thing you gotta do is disassemble the microphone. Pull that one ring off, pull the body off. And we have one screw here, two screws here. Let's get those out of the way. And two, so the mute button is connected here. You just gotta unplug that one cable, slide that out. There we go. Okay, so this is what I was talking about where you have this big plastic ring. It's the size of a large condenser. So it's 34 millimeters across. But right here in the middle is the actual condenser for the microphone, which is 14 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is replace this whole thing with one of these. So these are 25 millimeter condensers. I got them from AliExpress. I bought three of them for $12 shipped. So $4 total, the pricing will vary based on how many you order and whether or not you ship them from the United States. You can probably find something similar on Amazon. It'll usually cost a little bit more. Okay, so we have a screw here and a screw here. Now, if we were replacing the condenser with a 34 millimeter full pro tier a condenser, usually they'll have screw holes that will fit perfectly on the stand that's here. I didn't buy one of those. They run for around $20. When I spent $15 on the microphone, I don't want to commit that much money, but I'm hoping this will still be a pretty worthwhile upgrade. So let's pull these two screws off here. There's one. And let's get the second one off. You can see they just screw directly in the plastic. Next up, we're gonna desolder these two wires, solder them to here. So the body of the microphone is gonna be ground or the black wire. We're gonna put the white wire here on the center post. So we've got two joints to solder. So this should be relatively easy. First, let's get these wires off. There's one, there's the other out of the way. Okay, now white wire. Let's get that here on the center. Okay, there we go. Same for the black. Okay, I'll make it look harder than it really is. All right, now that we've got the two wires on, we just need to attach this condenser to this stand. Turn this way around. So I don't want to drill into the body of this microphone 
for a good permanent connection uh, with these screws until I'm sure that it's good. So I'm just going to use some hot glue, stick it on, we'll give it a test, and come back in and fix it more permanently if it's good. But the hot glue will probably hold fine either way. There we go, try to make it straight. All right, let's fill this in a little bit. Let that cool, and that should be good. And it's gonna be great, I promise. Let's put it back together. It's just the reverse of what we did before. So let's put the ring over the windscreen. We'll slide that over, slide the wires through the slot, plug those in. There we go, make sure the mute buttons lined up to the front. Got two holes to line up. There we go, first one's the hardest. Okay, one screw. Get in the hole, get in the hole. There we go. Second screw. Got the body of the microphone. Like Shaw. Screw it back on. There you have it. You can even see it shining on in there. Looks good. Looks like it was meant to be there the whole time. Okay, back to the studio and let's do some sound testing. Can you hear me? Okay, back to the microphone on the camera. Now that clearly didn't work, but why didn't it work? Hello, from the future. Now I'm older, wiser, more attractive. Yeah, I know it. As you can probably tell by my new shirt, it is now mid-October and freezing outside. Spooky. For anyone who doesn't want to listen to a long, boring technical lecture about microphones, good. I feel ya, because I don't want to make one either. This is supposed to be an easy tutorial to show off how swapping capsules in your microphone can make it sound different. So, I've been doing a lot of research and experimentation, I've learned a lot about condenser microphones, and I believe I now know enough to explain the basic idea behind what went wrong, but not enough to tutorialize how to upgrade your USB microphone into a super-powered mega mic. If I'd done this capsule swap on a more traditional XLR mic, then I think it would have worked. The short version of what went wrong is that I used the wrong part, but I was able to make it a lot better by adding a JFET. This is what that looks like. And this is what that sounds like. This is the Majority RS Pro paired with a new condenser and a J113 JFET. My voice is peaking between negative 42 and negative 36 dB with the gain turned up to 100% in Windows. This is the cleanest and clearest I've been able to get it. I've tried a few different JFETs. It's too close to the noise floor. So the signal to noise ratio just isn't very good. It's much cleaner, but it's just way too quiet. I tried adding a polarizing voltage of about 35 volts, but it had no noticeable effect, and I'm still not sure why. I don't think I'll be able to find a way to easily increase the output without reverse engineering the microphone's existing amplifier and ADC. That's not going to happen in this video, because I'm already two weeks deep into a two-hour project, and I am totally out of time. It took way too much work to figure out that I bought the wrong capsule, why it's the wrong part, and what I need to look for in a better one. They're just isn't very many people trying to make this kind of modification to their USB microphones, at least not in a location or format that I was able to both find and understand. Basically, on one side of the spectrum, there are a ton of people who do nothing but use mics. They don't know or care how it works, and they change how their mic sounds only in editing. These people are great at making videos because video production is usually their full-time job. On the other end of the spectrum, there's also a small community of analog engineering wizards who are out there designing microphones and amplifiers from scratch usually with an XLR interface. And these engineers are from a different era, old school analog. We're talking about lifelong industry veterans who went to school in the 70s and 80s to learn about technology from the 50s and 60s. They've forgotten more than I know. Most of them do not even slightly care about cheap USB microphones, and they absolutely suck at making YouTube videos. Never mind that, never mind that now, never mind that. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown, I'm standing here on the 
Parking lot. And wait, hold on. I know what you're thinking. You immediately thought of like three channels exactly like mine who put out great content that is concise, understandable, entertaining, and hugely popular. So before you rightfully point out that it is I who is the suck at the YouTube, I know exactly who you're thinking of. I watch the same channels as you. I like them too, and we both know that absolutely none of them are trying to modify a USB microphone right now. My whole point is that there is a knowledge gap that needs to be filled in, both for myself and for anybody else who is interested or who might be trying to take on a similar project. So if you care, and if you want to learn a bit more about how all this works, why this didn't work, my thoughts on how to improve it, then seriously, let me know. If there's enough interest, I'll finish putting together a deep dive follow-up to this video. But if not, I've got a lot of other fantastic videos planned, I have another Vegway microphone to review, so that's going to be fun. I'm also working on some content that has absolutely nothing to do with microphones, so I hope to see you back for that as well. Ta-ta for now, and thanks for watching.